Good morning and welcome back, y'all. My name is Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today is another day we're going to get into our watercolor journals and paint. Um, so this is the Everyday Watercolor Journal Ideas series and it's been so lovely to go on this journey with all of you. I am almost done with this journal, believe it or not. I'm so excited. I have, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five pages left. Five pages in this journal, five days of journaling um, or painting in our watercolor journals. And I am so excited because I have just received in the mail, finally, my favorite, a brand new favorite watercolor journal. So this journal will get started on in five days or six days. Um, blah. This is the Bao Hong um, cold press, 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton watercolor journal. I love this journal. I know it doesn't look like anything special. It just looks like a journal to you. Um, this is such, I love the paper that they have in here for a journal. It's one of the best that I have found um, that is still very reasonable. Uh, and there are Oh gosh, I don't remember how many pages are in it, but a lot. And I paint front and back. So um, we'll go over that when we break into it and I'll give you all the details. But it is part of the description. Uh, there is a link to them in the description of this video. I had a hard time getting them for a little while. Uh, the cold press ones, hot press were available, but cold press I could not get for a while. So I've been like fiending for a new one. And of course, of course, I bought two. I bought two because, you know, we're going to be on this journey and we're going to go through them super quick. Okay, so let's get started. Today I am going to, we're going to be doing some more patterning, pattern making. I have my paint, my journal, I have a size 10 brush. I'm also going to bring in my size 12 long, but really I'm bringing it in for this, this tip on the edge. I just love this brush recently. Um, I'm gonna use some bleed proof white later on and my micron pen. So we're gonna be doing some doodling. This is going to be similar, not the same, um, but similar to the one we did a few days ago uh, where we did these patterns here and colors. Like it's not gonna be close to the same, lots of different colors and different types of patterns, but simple pattern making, um, illustrative, you know, it's not going to be anything representational or anything like that. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start by making some beautiful, subtle colors. So this can be a great way where when you're painting, you just want to play with colors um, and patterns and designs, but you don't want to paint anything specific. I don't want to worry about having to paint a particular animal or a building or use a reference photo or anything like that. So, all right, what do I got in my palette here? I have, this is Quadacridone Magenta. Looks like a little blue has gotten in here or Payne's Gray or something to make it a little darker. This can be a great way to kind of use up colors in your color palette too, to get your brain engaged in like, how would I combine these to make them work and look good? This is definitely some sap green, phthalo blue, I'm not sure what's going on in this one, but it's of this green nature. I think it's from when we did our trees in the last one. And I honestly have no idea what went into this one, but it looks like a skin tone color and I've just added green to it. So based on what we have here, if you go back to our color theory, um, day a couple days ago you can kind of take these colors wherever you want if you know the rules so i have this beautiful quadacridone uh magenta that definitely has a little doctoring to it but i not i can't remember what um i want to make this a little more desaturated so the opposite of red or magenta is green i'm going to take a little bit of this green over here and just add it and you can see, you could take straight green out of your palette too. But you can even see how as I touch th this magenta into the green, the green is turning more gray as well. So now this is a, a mellower magenta. 
magenta e purple this green is definitely like a gray like a cool gray color um this green over here i want you to be more blue i'm gonna put some more phthalo blue in there i want it to be more of a blue gray color that looks good and i do want a green like I'm going to take this one back over here. I'm going to get some sap green. I do want like a cool grayish green. I need this to be a little more green. And then what is this in the middle here? This is definitely like a tannish gray. I'm going to take some of my raw sienna and add that in. It's a pretty mellow color palette with little pops. I think this looks great. And this is a little too, want to be maybe a little touch more orangey. I'm going to add a little red to it. Yeah, there, that looks good. Sorry for the glare on the palette there. Let me move that out of the light. There we go. Okay. These look good. I'm going to play with these. And all I'm going to do with these is I am going to, now, if you're really meticulous and you wanted to like square these out or measure them, I'm just going to paint squares. I'm going to paint squares and I'm going to play with the colors. I'm going to drop in some different colors, wet on wet in them. Or just more of the same color. And I'm just going to fill up this whole page, probably three or four rows of these squares. And then I'm going to use these as the backdrop to what I'm going to do next. I want this one actually to be a little more yellow, I think. A little more of this raw sienna. Yeah. Mm. Put this one down here. Green one over here. Get magenta. And I didn't plan this out, obviously, very well. I'm just kind of popping these in. So at least the same colors aren't right next to each other. And let's mix this together. I'll make a whole different color. This is like a purpley gray. Mix this blue green and this magenta get together. And you know, I'm gonna just touch a little bit of it into some areas. So this is, you know, playing with your colors, seeing what happens when you drop different colors in. You got to let things dry and see what happens, how things work out. Um, there's lots of different, uh, not techniques, um, effects that'll happen when you drop water into something that is already wet and or when it's damp and it will look different depending on the drying stage so this is a great time to just practice and play with different drying stages like this one i haven't touched in a while and it's damp almost dry and if i go back and try to fix it you know lots of times you're in a painting and you want to fix an area and you go back and it's damp almost dry i'm just gonna fi fix it and we'll see what happens. So I just added a little, you know, I kind of smoothed out this edge here. I'm going to see what happens now when it dries. It's not going to do what I think it's going to do. It's going to make probably whatever the issue was worse. Um, unless you're trying to create that texture on purpose, but you'll see when it dries. All right, we're going to let these dry. Um, they're fun. I love this one. 
um, dropping in that yellow into the blue green. I love this one, but I think it needs a little more. I'm going to take a little more magenta and purple and just drop a few more tidbits in there. And you know what I'm also going to do? I'm just going to put a big blob of water in the middle. I'm going to put a big blob of water kind of in the corner middle on this one and let it do its thing. All right, let's let them dry and then we'll come back and do some doodling on top. Okay, y'all, we're back and everything is dry. So let's look at some of these cool, uh, very interesting little patterns that we got and textures that we got. I love this one so much. This is the one we fixed and tried to make it flat, uh, like a flat wash or scrub some of the texture out, but we did it while it was damp. So you can see how that didn't quite work out as we hoped. So you do have to be careful when things are in different stages of drying, whether you're trying to force it to do something or get it not to do something. This one is super cool. Love it. Great. Okay. So we got some great little backgrounds here. I am going to use my Micron pen, more paint, and my Bleed Proof White to create some little, um, I guess, plant-like uh, designs on them. They'll all be kind of, I think, like plant-like. Uh, let's start anywhere. You can start anywhere and just start doodling on top of these. These set up a nice little frame for you to doodle on top of. You can stay within the frame or you can go outside of the frame. So let's just say I wanted to create like a leaf here across this one. You see I broke the frame on either side and I'm already going to, I'm going to also put like a little baby leaf over here. Okay. And now I'm going to start to give it some pattern, some shape. And because I'm using a micron pen, it is waterproof. So after it dries, give it a few seconds to dry for sure, but then I can paint over top of it. Um, with more paint and not worry about smudging the lines. But you do have to make sure whatever brand pen you use, Micron, I highly recommend. It is archival ink um, and it does not um, smudge with water as long as you let it dry a little bit. All right, I'm going to do this one up here. I'm just going to leave that like that. Um, I am going to add some more paint into these, but I'm going to let's doodle first before I switch back and forth. Um, okay. So I'm going to just do all different kind of weird, not weird, I guess not weird, but just shapes that could represent florals or leaves or vegetation of some kind. And this is a great way to just kind of let your mind wander and do its thing. Um, you don't have to be... too precise about it, but it's also a great way to get you to not do the same thing over and over again. So I really want to just keep drawing this because it's easy and I figured it out and I know it's going to work um, and I like the way it came out, but I want to push myself to come up with a very diverse array of different shapes and patterns. That can be trickier. Um, to get you to do and to be happy with it, to be happy with your results. All right. So, cause I still have a whole bunch more and I'm like already out of ideas, but just stop for a minute. Think, use your, um, imagination to be like, okay, how many different types of flowers have I ever seen? How could I break them down into really simple shapes? Um, doing bigger leaves and smaller leaves, trying to get large and small textures like these are more rounded. Let's do something over here. I'm going to do like a little cone flower, something with lots of petals. And again, I really didn't know where I was going with this. I wasn't planning on doing representational flowers, which I am now, like, but that's okay. All 
Um, let's see, what else? What else? And again, I'm going to add some more paint shortly and maybe some bleed proof white. But if you are someone who aspires to like do more than, than paint and you like to draw and add marks um, with pen or ink, marker, pencil, this is a great exercise to kind of incorporate both of those things. Do something from the side over here. You can add as much line or as little line as you want. So I'm adding additional texture into some of these. Um, I think I'm going to do something. Like rounded like this, but also have lots of textured lines coming out from it. And then maybe lots of little circles inside it. So playing with basic shapes. So circles, lines, um, diamond shapes, leaf shapes. To try to create other more complex things. And it really, it does engage your mind for sure. I'm going to color in these with my marker, the tops of these flowers. I like the contrast that gives. All right, got two more squares. Um, let's do, I did lots of little things here, um, little things there. Let's do one big thing with lots of little things. Or actually, yeah, let's do... these and then I'm also going to do oh this might be too much for this one I'll do it in the last one if I was going to do like a fern but I think it would just be too much so I'm just going to do this shape these little loop-de-loops here in varying sizes I'm going to color these in and now like a fern like leaf would be whole bunch of long shapes. Oh, I don't like the way I'm drawing them on the right side versus how I did them on the left side. They are different. <laughs> so I'm going to do another one up this way. And they're going to be different again. It's just the way my hand moves on the right side versus the left side. And that's okay. All right, so we have lots of shapes. Let's add some more paint. All right, I have my size, let's see, I have a size six. So I am going to add, I'm gonna paint some of these things in, not everything of all of them, but let me get some, and I just, if you notice anything different in my palette, while I was letting things dry, I refilled a bunch of my palette square so I could get rid of tubes of paint. So I was trying to be very economical with my time. Um, 
but now I have lots of wet paint in here, so I have to be more careful. I don't have to press as hard to, to activate it. All right, so I don't want quite that green green. We're gonna add a little phthalo blue. So sap green and phthalo blue to get like this blue green color. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna paint this half of this leaf. Maybe this half. I am going to now with watercolor, you gotta remember it's transparent, so whatever you paint over it, whatever's underneath is still going to influence it. So I'm gonna use this yellow and I'm gonna paint some of these leaves yellow, but it's not gonna be bright, bright yellow like on here because it's still interacting with whatever's behind it. Which is great, which is totally fine. Um, so if I took this yellow and put it in here, again, it's not gonna be super bright, bright yellow. It's gonna be like a greenish yellow because it's interacting with whatever's behind it. I laid it on thick, but as it dries, you are gonna be able to see quite a bit of what's going on below. And let me see, what else, what else? What else can we add some color? Oh, let's add it to these gals up here. I'm gonna go with Quinn Magenta. And I'm gonna drop in some yellow. All right, let's see. And hmm, these guys up here, let's do some phthalo blue. You can see I'm like not even painting in the whole leaf or being super careful. It's kind of very sketchy. It's fun. And it engages the brain. Let's do the other one, but more green. So I'm just adding sort of two different colors in here. Maybe I won't add any bleed proof white today. Or maybe I will. These down here, I think we're gonna do something orangey. Mm. This can be fun because look, we have these parts that go off the page or off the background there. So the part that's on the background is much more muted because it's being mixed with the background. But then the part that sticks off is much brighter and will be much brighter. Being careful of my yellow because it is still wet. So that can give you an idea as you experiment like what happens when something has paint already on it versus nothing behind it. You're going to see how the transparency works. Okay, so let's pull in some bleed proof white. I haven't done anything with this gal up here, but I want to, but I don't know what. But maybe some white will be involved. This one I'm just going to add white dots around the black dots. So we got a nice little black and white design. Might go back in with my pen on that one. I'm gonna water this bleed proof white down. Actually, let's use the 
let me use the white for my watercolor palette so you can see what that looks like. It's much more transparent. So I'm going to do that in these. It's much more transparent than what you would get in. It's just going to make things kind of look gray than what would you would get in bleed proof white. Ugh, and I'm even applying it pretty thickly. There we go. And I went over my little black dots in here, but I can go back and add those back in once this is dry, if I really want them. So this, you can even kind of see it here. They're not even fully dry. As they dry, they're gonna get lighter and grayer versus the bleed proof white is gonna stay very vibrant and not um, fade out. So like, Let's put some over here on the sleeve. Although I was really happy with this one, but I'm just playing now. And this gal has to get something. Let's make her all white. And I'll re-add the lines on over top. And you can see, I'm going to have to use bleed proof white. So I'm mixing now between bleed proof white and the titanium white that's in my palette, which is a watercolor. But bleed proof white is its own thing. All right, so we're going to let this dry and then we'll come back in and I'll re-add a bunch of those lines on top of it. But I think that's all the color I'm going to add. Um, maybe let's do a little orange. Orange, blue, yellow. I'm going to do orange over here. It's going to be weird. All right. Let yours dry. And then go back in and add more doodles on it. This is a great time to go refill your coffee or your tea if you're painting in the morning. Throw a load of laundry in. Take the dog out whatever it is, let it dry and come back and see if you want to add any more textures, but these are fun. All right, time for final details after we've let everything dry. And I would just like to show you here. So this is white watercolor versus a bleed proof white. So you can see even here, these are much grayer and transparent. I can actually see the little dots through them. Um, they're not as bright, but I can see the pen lines through them. I'm going to add more pen right on top of my watercolor. But that is when you get that white, if you get it in a set, just know that is what it's going to do when you layer it on top versus a bleed proof white. It is going to be transparent, just like all of your other watercolors. So just bear that in mind. All right. So I'm just adding a little bit more texture on top or re-outlining things where I may have lost a little bit of the, um, the oomph of the line. It got a little grayed out because of some stuff I put over top of it. This, we put bleed proof white on top, so we lost all of our lines. So I'm just gonna go right over top be gentle, especially if you put thick bleed proof white on because uh, you'll end up scratching the surface versus drawing on top of it. And I'm adding in even more lines than I originally had. There. I think that's good. This was fun. Don't forget to experiment and play. Don't be afraid to try new things. Um, I have no idea where I got this paint from, but I picked it up off of something on my hand. Uh, but otherwise, this was great. Oh gosh, always making a mess. It's probably 
something from when I refilled my palette. I have paint everywhere now. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the description for links to supplies and materials as well as so my social media and the Studio Crew Classroom. And I will see you all tomorrow for another wonderful everyday journal idea. Take care, y'all.